What's going on everyone? In this video, I want to talk about testing APIs, specifically GraphQL APIs. These are becoming increasingly more common these days because, well, they're just quite a good way to develop APIs. They have a lot of advantages over REST APIs and it seems to be the way uh, a lot of modern APIs are going. So this video really isn't about what vulnerabilities exist in GraphQL APIs, but it's more about how to set up your testing environment so you can test GraphQL APIs, because this is relatively unknown within uh, InfoSec, at least in my experience. So first and foremost, we've got a GraphQL API. We're using the SpaceX GraphQL API and sometimes they have a front end which looks like this. You can also take this GraphQL API URL and use a program called GraphQL Playground and pop it into there and you get a similar looking uh, front end. For example, if there isn't a web application front end. So like any other API, you need some documentation so you can understand how to use the the API, what parameters exist and things like that. So with GraphQL API, sometimes an introspection uh, is enabled, which allows you to gain access to all of the different things that can be done within the API. So moving over to this tool called GraphQL Voyager, this maps out everything that can be done in GraphQL APIs. So if I click change schema, go to introspection and then copy this introspection query, if we pop this into either this front end box here or in our playground here, you'll get back the whole schema of what can be done with this SpaceX GraphQL API. If introspection isn't enabled, you're gonna to have to ask your client to give you the schema so you can actually do some work, uh, else you'll be trying to guess what the queries and mutations are on GraphQL, and you know, you're just not gonna be a good test. So take this data here, pop it into here, there are offline versions of this, so you don't put your client data into this web application, but as you can see here, this is everything that can be done on the GraphQL API endpoint for SpaceX. And you see all of like the different mappings here uh, for all the different well things that can be done really. So how do you get on to test this? Well, I like to use Postman for this. So we can take that introspection schema again, go to Postman, click import, go to raw text and just pop it into there. That will then generate all of the GraphQL queries, mutations, subscriptions for you to do testing. So I'm just gonna grab the URL because you need to specify that in a minute. So grab that URL, go back to Postman and open up the collection. Go to variables and then you see this URL isn't populated. So just go in there and save it, control S. Now you have all of your queries, mutations, and things you need to test. So for example, if I go to history, this is the history mutation in the SpaceX GraphQL endpoint. So if you go to body, this is what a GraphQL query looks like. You've got the kind of main query uh, section here and all the variables that can be passed into the query. So if I just change the ID to one, you'll see that this was the first SpaceX flight because we're looking at the history details. So to test this, you can test it from just Postman. You know, you do an SQL injection, put a quote there and see what happens, uh, nothing. But the better way to do this is proxying it through Burp. So to set that up, if you click the settings button up here, go to settings, go to proxy and make sure this is your settings and your proxy server matches Burp Suite here. You also want to go to general and just make sure SSL certificate verification is off because it's gonna be man in the middling through Burp Suite, you don't want errors. If your GraphQL API needs an authorization header, you can set that back in the Postman collection here. So in, under authorization, you can do API keys, bearer tokens, OAuth, whatever your authentication is and just save that. This doesn't need it, so I can send without needing that. So now we're proxying through Burp. If I just go ahead and intercept a request, this is what it looks like in Burp. Burp Suite is not good at GraphQL. However, there are extensions that help. So if I send this to Repeater, you'll see that I've got an extension called GraphQL. So although this looks messy and repeater now, if I click GraphQL, 
it sets it up in a better way, kind of like Postman. So you've got the query section here, you've got the variable section here, and injection points just tells you the different things that you can put injections into to try and find issues, really. So you can then change that to different parameters and send it off, and that 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 will be the second SpaceX flight, whereas we were just looking at the first. And obviously you can just do this in repeat it yourself. Although it doesn't look good, you can just go ahead and change the ID there and it will still work. So you might want to put this into Intruder, you know, do what you'd commonly do in web applications or API testing and just add that uh, and do an attack on that and things like that. But as I say, this, this video really isn't about what vulnerabilities exist. It's just about setting up your environment. And between using Burp Suite like this um, and looking at all your Postman queries here and your mutations, which are uh, the things that update GraphQL um, resources, you can just go through all of the different variables and test as much as you want to test. So that's how you set your environment up for GraphQL. Hope you learned something today and uh, thanks for watching. See you again. Like and subscribe.